Well, it's the last day of May and the IBC is, I think you can just see the level there, but it's nearly empty again. So that's an indication of how dry it's been. So I'm going to have to get that filled up this morning and uh, we'll have a mooch about. So I'll bring you back. So let's quickly have a look in the small greenhouse. Uh, see how firm. I brought my strawberries in from outside, really just to um, stop the birds getting them, to be honest. Uh, but continuing to get a few strawberries. Got some more flower, I just got a little paintbrush to uh, help with the pollination. And I've got some uh, basil. Nothing really happening much with the ginger, but there is seems to be like a bit of a green shoot on it, so I do believe it takes a long time to get going. On the sweet peppers, the bell peppers, you see they're starting to bush out now where I uh, pinch the top out and I'm just keeping my eye on the aphid issue and just spraying with soapy water um, as and when you know I notice any. So yeah, but uh, generally speaking um, they're looking good. I might give them another spray with Epsom salts uh, in a week or two and I've still got some to top out, I haven't topped them all out yet but so far uh, they're doing alright So in the bigger greenhouse uh, this side here we've got the Wenzel and the uh, Monster the, the big sort of beefsteak tomato looks like we're just going to get a first truss starting to flower and then I've got my uh, cucumbers in the halo rings and they're uh, growing quite nicely now and then of course over this side we've got the uh, these are the cherry tomatoes I think there's about 15 plants something like that so that's I'm still waiting to get some uh, cool glass. Uh, I went up to the garden centre the other day and they, they've put an order in so hopefully uh, in another week or two I'll be able to get some, and get some of that on, that shade paint. It will help. Finally got the zucchini out and uh, the other leaves got a bit frazzled or something but here the, you can see it's nice green growth now. It looks like there's even a little fruit on down there. The multi sown beet, still getting issues with the beet leaf miner, so I'll just keep removing the leaves and then spraying them with Nemo when I get a chance. That's pretty much all we can do with that. This multi sown spinach, <coughs> I've noticed it's just starting to run to seed now, so I've got two today is to harvest these leaves, and then in this row, I've got half a tray of more beets to go in so that's just timed perfectly um, because to be honest with you we're screaming to go out so that's great I'll pick harvest as I say and then they can go in there these are the arctic plenty bush tomatoes and they've picked up now since we had those really bad strong cold north winds you can see what it you know they didn't like that at all but uh, they're looking a lot better now The uh, multi sown stir on onions are looking good and it shouldn't be too much longer before I can start pulling some of those as spring onions. These are the um, Sabrune shallots and uh, they're looking really good. I haven't been watering the elephant garlic at all now for at least 10 days so I won't be watering it anymore until uh, I've lifted it which probably would be in another couple of weeks. And the Monge 2 are absolutely full of flowers. I had my first small harvest of Monge 2 yesterday and this second row here have uh, recovered after being attacked by the wood pigeons but you can see they're making some nice growth now they're catching up again. And this is just some multi-sown spinach that I've squeezed in down the edge of the bed. This bed with, uh, we've got cos lettuce here 
and um, multi-stone baits which don't seem to be as badly affected with the miner as the other bed and uh, the Swiss chard again I've not noticed hardly any damage at all I've been quite lucky really with that it's looking really good and then we've just got another little row of multi-stone spinach here And the purple sprouting broccoli has kind of reached the top of the mesh now. You can see it's pushing up against the mesh. So what I will probably do is take that off. And then I've uh, got some uh, BT. So I'm just going to spray. As soon as I see any caterpillars, I'll just spray with the BT. And hopefully that will, um, that will control cabbage white. See the carrots in the frames are doing well and the gaps, where there was gaps I sowed some Autumn King too and they're come, they've come through mostly I think there's just one or two yet to come through but when you get more leaves on I'll thin those out and this row of potatoes has recovered well after that late frost and it just looks like they're coming up to some flowers developing that's a good sign Really excited about getting some blueberries this year. There's quite a few on. So, yeah, looking forward to those. And if this happens on your apple tree, you can see where they've got a big fruit set here, but it's still chucking flowers out. I'll just cut those off because they're not gonna they're not gonna make up in time, so there's no point in allowing the tree to put waste energy in setting those, so just remove them. Uh, just some uh, folks walking past said to stop filming anyway. I was going to say I put this uh, scaffold netting up as a... We've got some changing weather coming. Uh, it's going to get a lot cooler with some potentially gusty winds coming from the north. So all I could think of was north is roughly that way. So just to try and shield these um, tomatoes, the French beans and the little uh, patio butternut squash. I just rig this bit of a barry up in the hope that it'll protect them. <clears throat> and then the other thing I'll probably do towards later on today is put some uh, mesh, it's not mesh, uh, fleece over the courgette bed and uh, probably do the same here with the uh, <coughs> dwarf French beans I put some because they look they're definitely looking better now after that um, those gale, gale force winds battered them a bit but they're looking better now so put some upturned plant pots just to raise the height and hopefully put a little bit of mesh on and they'll be okay just a little update on the <coughs> excuse me single seed challenge. This is the zucchini, the trailing zucchini sent from Willie Coleman originally from seed from uh, Tim at Troll Forge. There's a little bit of yellowing in the leaves here, but that's this top part here is now a lot greener, looking good. Uh, looks like some male flowers here. Anyway, I'm just keeping an, uh, an eye on it and we'll keep you updated as to its progress. Another thing to notice now we're into June <coughs> is the small fruitlets. So we're into the June drop. It's early this year. You can see there's just one dropped off there now. So we're well and truly into the June drop, if this one here. So that's just the trees. Uh, it's the tree's own uh, system, if you like, of um, getting rid of excess fruit. So once that's finished, we'll give it another couple of weeks and then we'll need to get into the trusses and thin them out. These things aren't going to stay on. 
but yeah we'll need to get in there and thin those down to just two to a truss something like that so I'll, that's for another video and just another little look at the cordon gooseberry example so this lead shoot now is growing away obviously due to the drought and what have you it hasn't grown anywhere nearly as vigorously as we'd like but it's only for an example but you can see there was one bud, I left three buds to the cutting there's one here which I pinched out a second one there which I pinched out and then that allowed this leader to grow away so I hope that example is making sense so all you would do is you know just continue to allow this leader to come up maybe put a cane in tight to it for a bit of support but that's generally the idea and I will come back to that um, in due course so just stopped off on the micro watches on the way home and got another bag full of the affected uh, pear fruitlets and then I've just had a quick look in the <coughs> codly moth trap and there's some more now you can make that out but there's actually foot there's four in there so there's three last night so uh, definitely looks like we're going to need to spray with the BT this weekend catch you later so uh, Wednesday 3rd of June uh, we had a change of wind direction coming from the north now and a big drop in temperature so I've put some fleece over the courgettes to try and just protect them a bit and also over here over the um, French beans and uh, I'll just show you this squash I don't think it's looking so good So I don't know whether the wind's done that, but it was, it just doesn't look, I'll leave it anyway, it might survive. I'm going to have a look at the others, this, this was the Olga squash from Benny L. A little bit of scorching on the leaves, but some nice new growth there, and these look green enough, so yeah, should be alright. So I'm just going to finish this video. Uh, I had a question from a chap called John about these propagation trays. So John if you're watching, these are the 28Ls and you can see the holes underneath. Um, plenty of room, push your finger up and the plug pops out, no problem at all and as you can see they stack very neatly. They're very rigid really good stuff so yeah 28 L's that's what I use the only thing I would say is just when you sowing seeds or what have you cut in just make sure the compost is pressed down tight and before you attempt to uh, remove a plug you know just make sure you give it a really good soaking and as I say pop, pop finger in underneath and it'll just pop out as a perfect plug so Yep, I'm very happy with those. Alright, thanks for watching, I'll see you later.